In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create a bastion host that I can use as a jump box. So what I'm essentially going to use this bastion host for is when I have privately addressed EC2 instances, I need some way to access those privately addressed instances from the internet. Bastion host is going to serve as basically a jump box that I can access from the internet. And then from there, I can jump into those privately addressed EC2 instances. So let's take a look. I'm going to go to the AWS console. Here you can see I'm in the Stockholm region still. I'm going to click on EC2 and I'm going to create a new EC2 instance. So for my AMI, I'm going to scroll down here and look for a free tier eligible Windows Server 2012 base. That's what I'm going to grab. Windows Server 2012 R2 base. I'm just going to use that and choose a general purpose T3 micro instance. And then under instance details, I need to configure a few things. And so I'm going to associate this EC2 instance with my Rick demo VPC. I'm going to put it on my public subnet and I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it gets a public IP address because remember, I'm going to be accessing this instance from the internet and using it to jump into other EC2 instances. Now it's going to be on my public subnet, which means it's going to have a public IP address and it's also going to have a private IP address inside of that subnet. So now I'm just going to quickly jump through the next few options here. I'm not going to change my storage options. I'm not going to change my tags, but I am going to create a new security group and I'm going to call it RDP. So I want to allow remote desktop traffic from the internet into this EC2 instance. Now I may want to specify a more specific range of source addresses rather than just allowing it from the internet. But since this is just a demo, I'm going to go ahead and allow it from the internet in general. And now I'll click on review and launch. Now, before we move on, I just want to go back to the previous screen. What you may want to do in real life, if you're creating a bastion host, is you may actually want to create multiple network interfaces. So for example, I could come down here to network interfaces and I can add a second network interface and make this a dual homed EC2 instance. And the benefit of making this a dual homed EC2 instance is then I could establish certain security groups on the interface that is accessible on the internet and I could have a different security group for the interface that I'm going to be using to manage those other EC2 instances inside of my VPC. So that's one other thing that I just want to make a note of here is if you're doing this in real life, you may want to consider creating a dual homed instance. Okay, so now we're ready to launch our instance here. And it's warning me, hey, you've opened this thing up to the world. You may want to lock that down a little bit better, but like I said, this is just a demo. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with it. And I'm going to go with my existing key pair as well. So now I'm going to wait for this new instance to be launched. I'm just going to click on the link here for this instance so that I can monitor the progress. And once it's done, we'll connect to the instance and set it up as a bastion host. So now I can see that my instance is up and running. I'm just going to click on the connect button and I'm going to go ahead and get the administrator password for this instance. So I'm just going to click on get password. And what I now need to do is use my key pair to decrypt that password. So I'll go ahead and do that. So I imported my key pair. I decrypted my password and I'm going to go ahead and just save that somewhere. So here I've created a little text document with all the connection parameters for my EC2 instance. And now I'm going to go ahead and run remote desktop. So what I'll do now is I'll just download the remote desktop file and that's automatically going to have the IP address and the username baked right into it so that I don't have to type that stuff into RDP. So I'll download the remote desktop file. I'll click on that and go ahead and connect. 
And then all I'm going to need to do is just paste in my password here and go ahead and click on OK. It's going to ask me this question about my certificate here. Yep, I'm fine with this. So let's go ahead and proceed. And there we go. Now I've got an RDP session, a remote desktop protocol session, launched to this Windows EC2 instance. And because this is the first time I'm logging in, it may take a moment just to get everything ready. So now what I need to do is get PuTTY and get my private key and place those in this EC2 instance as well because I'm going to be using this instance to connect to other EC2 instances using SSH. So I went to the folder that had my PPK key in it and I just copied that file and I'm just going to go ahead and paste that file here into this remote computer and I'm going to use the same process for PuTTY. I'll go ahead and grab my PuTTY installer and I'll paste that in here too. So now I've got my PPK key and I've got PuTTY installed on this remote machine. And so now I'm going to go ahead and grab my SSH key and import that. Here it is. So now that my PPK key is imported, I should be able to use PuTTY within this Bastion host. And as you can see here, this instance does have a private IP within my VPC, so I should be able to use this instance to connect to a private EC2 instance as well. So here's my private instance. And you can see the IP is 10.1.1.14. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that IP address here. I'll go ahead and put the connection parameters into PuTTY. And I'm going to go ahead and click on open and I'll just choose yes here. And there we go. So now I'm into a privately addressed EC2 instance that normally would be completely inaccessible over the internet. That's the purpose of a bastion host or a jump box is to create an EC2 instance that has a public IP address that I can use to connect up to. And then from that, I can jump into EC2 instances with private IP addresses inside of my VPC.